Welcome to episode 352, where I'm talking about disorders which can occur in the blood channel, or Rakta Vahasrotas as it's known in Ayurveda. This can include bleeding disorders, inflammation, and skin conditions like eczema, psoriasis, rashes, and hives, to name a few. I also talk about the Ayurvedic management of these disorders, so please stay tuned. Hi there, I'm your host Colette, and on this podcast I will be sharing the teachings of Ayurveda, yoga, and holistic health practices. Now if you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend checking out the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. Thanks for listening, and now here is a new episode. This episode is sponsored by Kerala Ayurveda. Do you wish to learn holistic lifestyle habits to maintain your well-being and create positive shifts in your life? Kerala Ayurveda Academy welcomes you to upgrade your lifestyle, align with nature, and inspire others to do the same. Courses are available for beginners, as well as advanced learners and professionals, both online and in person in the beautiful Bay Area, California. Beginner certifications start October 15th, and it's not too late to join. For $100 off tuition for the fall trainings, use the code ELEMENTS100 when you apply or register. To learn more, visit keralaayurveda.us slash courses, and I'll put all that info in the show notes. Hello, and welcome back to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. It's me, Colette, today for a solo episode on the imbalances and disorders which can occur in Rakta Vahasrotas, or the blood channel. Rakta Datu is one of the seven tissues of the body, and it represents blood, or the red blood cells. And Rakta Vahasrotas are the channels involved in the production and transportation of blood. The root or mula of Rakta Vahasrotas is the liver and spleen. The passage or marga of this channel are the arteries carrying the blood and the Rakta Vahasrotas includes the red blood cells, the heart, liver, spleen, bone marrow and the arteries in the body. The opening or mukha of this channel is the arterial venous junction. The Rakta Vahasrotas is the channel involved in the production and circulation of blood, Rakta, throughout the body. And the key functions of Rakta Vahasrotas are transporting oxygen and other nutrients throughout the body. And the removal of waste, including carbon dioxide and other metabolic waste from the body, transporting them to the lungs, the kidneys and the skin for excretion. Now, to learn more about Rakta Vahasrotas and the subdoshas involved, check out episode 280, where I went into that in detail. And in this episode, as I said, I'm focusing on the imbalances and disorders which can occur in this channel. So let's start with looking at some of the signs and symptoms of aggravation in Rakta Vahasrotas. You could see this on the skin with the manifestation of acne, hives, rashes, eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis, vitiligo, and scabies. There could be inflammation, maybe of the gums, the teeth, the tongue, and in various other parts of the body. There may be a burning sensation and bleeding gums and other bleeding disorders, blood clots, red burning eyes. There may be ulcers in and around the mouth and abscesses. Anemia, bruising easily, enlarged liver or spleen, jaundice, hepatitis and fever are all signs of aggravation of Rakta Vahasrotas, hair loss or alopecia, and emotions like anger, hate and jealousy. We can see a lot of these signs of aggravation are related to the Pitta Dosha and that's because Pitta is the mala or waste of the Rakta Datu or tissue. The tissue rakta is flowing through rakta vahasrotas, and if this datu is aggravated, it can affect the functioning and structural integrity of this channel. Also, vitiation of rakta vahasrotas can lead to aggravation of the rakta datu, which in turn can aggravate the other tissues or datus, as rakta is the second tissue formed after digestion. 
And then it goes on to nourish the five other tissues. If you're unfamiliar with the nutrition and nourishment of the tissues, then check out episode 92, where I go into lots of detail on the nutrition of the datus. And so if these signs or symptoms of imbalance in Raktavash Shrotas are not pacified, then it could manifest into further disorders. And there are four types of disorders which can occur in a channel. The first one being atipravruti, which is the overflow, excess flow, or hyperactivity of the channel. The second one being sangha, which is the stagnation or accumulation of the shrotas. Third type of disorder could be sirogranti, which is the dilation or excess growth of a shrotas. And finally, vimarga gamanam, which is the false channel or where the channel or shrotas is moving in the wrong direction. So here are some common diseases and disorders associated with Rakta Shrotas. The first one is called Rakta Pitta, and this refers to bleeding disorders, which could include bleeding gums, nosebleeds, excessive menstruation, and blood in the urine or stool. The next one is Pandu, which can be correlated to anemia, which is a low red blood cell count leading to fatigue, weakness, and paleness. The next disorder is Kamala, which is correlated with jaundice, which results in a yellow pigmentation of the skin and the whites of the eyes due to elevated level of bilirubin. Now, bilirubin is produced by the breakdown of old red blood cells, and its metabolism occurs in the spleen, blood vessels, and liver. The next disorder is Kushta, which can be correlated to skin conditions like eczema, psoriasis, vitiligo, chronic dermatitis, boils, hives, and rashes. Visarpa is the next condition, and we've talked about this separately on a podcast with Dr. Sujata, and this can be correlated to herpes and shingles. Due to a viral infection, it can result in really painful, blistering rash with fever and body aches. The next condition is arsha or hemorrhoids, which can be internal or external. They can be very painful and they may also bleed. And there are many other inflammatory conditions which could be associated with disorders in Raktavashrotas, including conditions like hepatitis, which is inflammation of the liver, gastritis, abscesses, and peptic ulcers. These disorders in Raktavashrotas can arise due to various factors like imbalances in the doshas, particularly that of pitta, poor lifestyle choices, improper diet, stress, and of course, the accumulation of amor toxins in the body. So let's take a look at some of the possible causes of aggravation. And we'll notice here that a lot of these causes are pitta aggravating, like food that is pungent and spicy excess salt and sugar, sour foods. We know the sour taste is aggravating to pitta, and that would include foods like yogurt, cheese, pickles, fermented foods, oily or fried foods, peanuts and sesame seeds, both aggravate pitta, they're oily and heating, poor food combinations, which I discussed in detail in episode 26, caffeine, alcohol, and stimulants, a loss of blood, iron deficiency, and deficiency in B12, too much exposure to the sun or working in hot conditions, suppressing heated emotions like anger and jealousy can really lead to a pitta aggravation as well. And liver and spleen disorders can also cause an aggravation in Raktavashrotas as both these organs are considered the root of this channel. So now let's move on and take a look at how Ayurveda manages disorders in Raktavashrotas. Well, the first step is carrying out a comprehensive diagnosis and determining the rogi's unique constitution, a detailed review of their diet, lifestyle, stressors, emotions, etc., determining their vikruti or current imbalance and the dosha or doshas involved, and an assessment of the affected area. Ayurvedic treatment of an aggravation in Raktavashrotas involves a holistic approach, which may include cleansing the body, which will help pacify the aggravated dosha or doshas, and will also pacify any inflammation, will help eliminate any accumulation of armor or toxins. It will help to purify the blood, boost the immune system, and therefore nourishing Raktadatu, 
rakta vajrotas, and all the other tissues and organs of the body. As remember, rakta is responsible for transporting nutrients throughout the body. Also, it's important to look at a pacifying diet, providing the rogi with detailed food lists and meal plans for their aggravated dosha. In the case of Raktavashrota aggravation, as I mentioned earlier, pitta is likely to be involved here. Therefore, pitta pacifying foods should be discussed and food lists provided tailoring all this information to the rogi's specific needs and lifestyle. And talking about lifestyle, it's important to discuss self-care practices like the dinacharya. Stress management is key, as when pitta is aggravated, there can be intensity and heated emotions. And so addressing pitta pacifying lifestyle practices with the rogi is very important. And addressing any pitta intensity in work and sport is also necessary. And so bringing in less competitiveness and more moderation and enjoyment in life, including calming self-care practices and mindfulness practices, which are tailored to the rogi's lifestyle. And by tailoring all this advice to the rogi's lifestyle, this is the best way to ensure sustainability. Of course, we'll look at Ayurvedic herbs too, if it's necessary to purify the blood, rejuvenate the body and support Raktavashrotas. And another treatment that's used in Ayurveda, but not practiced in the West, is Rakta Moshana, which is bloodletting. And this is used in conditions, particularly when there's aggravated Rakta, Datu, and Pitta Dosha. And I did see this treatment in action when I was in India and talked about it in episode 258, where we were shown how leeches were used on a skin condition to heal the wound and purify the blood. So it was fascinating to see it in action. Check out episode 258 for more information on that. And by addressing these imbalances through a holistic Ayurvedic approach, the aim is to restore the natural flow and function of the channel, promoting overall health and well-being. And if you're looking for support on your Ayurvedic journey, then please check out my online offerings. I have online consultations. I have my digestive reset cleanse. This is a cleanse that comes with a 90 minute online consultation so that I can tailor the cleanse to you. I have two options for this cleanse. The structure of the cleanse is the same, but the options is availability. So the private cleanse, you get to choose your own dates and you have me one to one for support. And the group discounted cleanse happens three times a year. The next one starts October 4th, 2024, and you get group support. We have a private community and go through that together for support and accountability. And if you'd like to study by yourself, I have my Daily Habits for Holistic Health program. That's a 28-day self-paced program with the objective to help you set up your lifestyle to live in tune with the circadian rhythms and educate you on the dinacharya, the self-care practices, and how to become your own healer. I also put all these programs together in one package called the Reset, Restore, Renew program that includes a consultation, the cleanse, and the daily habits. You can check all this information out on my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com. And if you have any questions before you book any of my services, then please take advantage of my free 15-minute online services inquiry call. We can hop on Zoom and I can answer all of your questions. And I will put all those links in the show notes. So I hope you found this insight into the disorders in Rakta Vashrotas helpful. And if you think this will be interesting to others, please share it with them so we can spread this wisdom of Ayurveda. If you haven't already subscribed or follow the podcast, please do so. And the new episodes will automatically download for you. And if you would like to leave a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcast, I would really appreciate that. Please come follow me on social media. You can find me on Instagram. My new page is Elements of Ayurveda Podcast. And on Facebook, it's Elements Healing and Wellbeing. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take good care of yourself, be well, and bye for now. Slonga full.